This video is going to cover the Fundamentals of Engineering exam, who can take it, what is on it, and how to view your results and register. So the FE exam is Fundamentals of Engineering. So this is the first exam in the path to becoming a licensed professional engineer. Passing the FE exam will enable you to apply for the engineer intern certification. And then once you've worked under someone who has their PE license, for four years, then you can take the PE or professional engineering exam and get your professional engineering license. This exam is put on by NCES. This is the National Council of Examiners for Engineering and Surveying. So the Fundamentals of Engineering exam is now a computer-based test. It costs $225 to take, and it has 110 questions. So you get six hours to take it. This includes basically a 10 minute tutorial, five hours and 20 minutes of working questions and about a half hour break. So if you have five hours and 20 minutes, that is 320 minutes, 110 questions. So you get less than three minutes of questions. So you really need to be on your game when you're taking this test. Now, in order to register, there are different requirements in different states on who can take it. If you have graduated or are a senior in your last year of an ABET accredited engineering program, then you are going to be eligible to take the exam. Engineering technology students can sometimes take it and sometimes not, depending on what state that they're in, but you can always go to a different state in order to take your exam. You do not have to take it in the same state that you're going to school in. The FE exam comes in lots of different flavors. So if there is a specific version that matches to your major, you want to take that one. If there is no version that is specifically the title of your major, then you would take the other disciplines. So if your major is mechatronics or general engineering, engineering science, biomedical engineering, literally anything that is not one of these existing exams, you will take the other disciplines. So we'll click on that and see what's inside the exam. So this one, you can see this is effective beginning with the July 2020 examinations and at the time of this video is 2025. So they do not update this very frequently. So you can be pretty confident that this stuff that you're studying is going to be on the exam. Now it's set up here so that there is the, each section is listed here along with all of the subtopics and then how many questions that you can expect to see on that section. What I have heard from students who have taken it recently is that there was way more chemistry and thermodynamics than they were expecting. So remember that these are all just sort of ranges and take this, take it with a grain of salt because they really can throw you pretty much anything. So this exam covers math, probability and statistics, chemistry, instrumentation and controls, engineering ethics, safety, engineering economics, statics, dynamics, strengths of materials or mechanics of materials, material science, fluid mechanics, electrical engineering, thermodynamics, and heat transfer. So a really good way to study is to make sure that you can solve problems in all of these sections. Also, you will get a handbook on the exam. So if you download that handbook and you can use it to just identify what equation to use to solve each type of problem, then you can study a lot more efficiently than if you actually go through and work every problem out. Although you do want to do some of that, especially in the areas that you're weak in. So there, most of the questions are multiple choice with four answer choices, but there are gonna be a few, like maybe 10 or less questions that are a little bit different. So these alternative question types can include multi-select, drag and drop, matching, or fill in the blank. There are lots of resources available to help you on the exam. So there is the examinee guide that kind of walks through all of the different policies. Basically what you need to know is there is gonna be a specific calculator and you're pretty much not allowed to bring anything with you into the exam room except a pair of eyeglasses. Um, so no water bottle, no scratch paper, um, no jacket. Um, yeah, literally nothing except for, they will give you a dry erase booklet and marker, 
but expect to be completely inspected, almost like going through airport security and getting patted down to that to that level. There are practice exams here that you can purchase. And there are other places that have practice exams also, but these ones by NCES are very similar to what you will find on the true exam. So these interactive practice exams are basically a computer version where your screen will look the same way as it does in the actual testing environment. So it has the built-in handbook and um, it has um, all, all of the questions and all of the solutions. So these are $50 and you can take it as many times as you need to within a year from the date of purchase. If $50 is too much and you want just an ebook download, then you can also get one specific for your discipline here. So these are $35. You download it, you keep it forever. You can print it out if you want to. There are other ways to study for this exam too. So a very popular one is how to pass the FE on the first try. So this book, this has 330 practice problems. So this is the equivalent of three full length exams and it has all of the solutions worked out. So this, it really gives you a lot of bang for your buck. You can see it's only $25 and many people have used this successfully. So there are other practice books out there, but as far as like, if you want to get a high return on investment, this is a good way to go. So calculator policy. There are only certain calculators that are allowed on the exam. So um, the Casio ones are very well liked by the people that use them. And they have a, the biggest screen of all of the allowed calculators. So that is a good recommendation. I don't know anyone that uses the Hewlett Packard calculator. Um, the Texas Instruments the TI-30 and the TI-36 models can be used. Basically, your calculator cannot have graphing capabilities and it cannot be programmable. So like TI-83, TI-84, TI-89, none of those are allowed. There is an on-screen calculator. If you happen to forget your calculator on exam day, there will be an on-screen calculator that resembles the TI-30X. You will need to log in and so you have to create an account first if you don't have an account, but then you would log in here. So when you log in, there are all of these different things you can do. So register for an exam, purchase a practice exam, view your results, um, review exam day policies, calculator policy, reference handbooks. Books. So this reference handbook is the formula book that you'll get on the exam. So if we download this, this is the same handbook that exists for all of the FE exams. So no matter which version you take, whether it's mechanical or electrical or other disciplines, it is the same exact handbook. So the handbook is like 500 pages long and it is searchable so you can control F. That'll be super helpful. So the main things that you want to see is table of contents. So this has all the different possible sections. You will only need to actually refer to about half of these sections, depending on which version of the exam you're taking. So you will probably not have to refer to sections that are not really covered very much in your discipline. But the units and conversion factors is a very helpful section. So if you happen to forget like what are the different constants, like acceleration due to gravity or um, permittivity coefficient or anything like that, um, then you can view those here. So this has conversions between Fahrenheit, Celsius, and so on, and then significant figures, all of the different constants. So ideal gas constants, gravity, speed of light, all of that stuff is here. And then also conversions between English and metric units. So don't worry if you forget what all of those conversions are, they are all right here in the handbook. So 
I recommend highly that you download this handbook and refer to it while you are studying because the, the more familiar you get with the handbook, the easier it will be when you're taking the real exam because you'll know kind of what sections of the handbook to refer to, what's there, what's not there that you would have to memorize and so on. So once you register for the exam, you'll do that here. You have to click and fill out all your information. It will make you pay for the exam before you choose a testing center. So I highly recommend that you schedule your exam a few months in advance, like at least two months before you want to take it so that you can have your choice of testing center as well as having adequate time to prepare for it. Because what you don't want to do is pay the $225 and then end up having to drive like two hours to a microscopic town because that's the only place that had the testing center available for a six hour time slot. So when you get your results, then it will show up here. So you can see this one, I took it when it was a paper test. This was 2013 was actually the last year that it was a paper test after that it converted to online. It will tell you your result and then it has this results notice here. So this results notice will have your picture now, they take pictures of you, and then it has a verifiable link. So this verifiable link, you can copy it and send it to anyone you need. So if you have an employer that requires you to pass the FE or your school requires you to pass it for graduation or for reimbursement or anything, you can send this link to them and they will be able to see really whether you passed or failed. It's just your link to your results. But it'll either say pass here or it will say unsuccessful attempt if you failed it. So if you pass it, then all you know is that you pass. You don't know how well that you pass. There's no sort of report on, you know, did you just scrape by? Did you do it amazing? All, all that is there is it will just say pass. If you failed it, then you will get a little bit more information so you know what to study next. So if you fail it, you will get a diagnostic report similar to this one. So this one is for someone taking the electrical and computer, but the so these categories would change, but um, it will be whatever is on the exam specifications, that outline that we looked at earlier. So here, this line down the middle is the average of the people that passed. And so if, you're on, if your bar is on the right side of average, it means you did better in those areas. And if your bar is on the left side, it means you did worse. So the green would be either you were better than average or you did just a little bit worse than average, but you were still kind of close. The yellow is you did significantly worse than average, and then the blue is you did absolutely terrible, so you definitely want to re review those areas. So that is it for how to navigate the FE exam. So you should go ahead and make an account, figure out what you're going to use for your study plan, download the handbook, get the right calculator, and make a game plan so that you can be 100% ready on exam day.